Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Doug Long. I'm the world's number one weight loss surgeon, author of the best-selling Ultimate Gastric Sleeve Success, as well as 12 other books and two more on the way. Welcome to video number three of our four-part series on obesity and money. Have you ever thought about this? Obesity and money are actually related, right? Think about that. Have you ever said eating healthy is too expensive? I can't afford fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, I can't afford a gym membership. Must be nice, Dr. Wong. Right? Um, I'm here to tell you that's just bullshit. It's, that's a money issue, right? That's a money issue. And if you've been following all the videos, the last video I talked about, uh, the false money beliefs, that's just not true. Like money is the root of all evil, money doesn't grow on trees, etc., etc. So if you haven't watched that video, I strongly suggest you go back and look at video number two. Today is video number three. We're going to talk about how to improve your personal finances. Now, I'm not going to give you financial advice like Dave Ramsey, don't follow him, or Susie Orman, I wouldn't follow her. I'm just going to tell you what I did to get out of $4 million in debt. You see, in 2008, I was a struggling young surgeon. I had $4 million worth of real estate because, you know, the real estate market was hot. I hit the real estate crash in 08. We all know what happened there. Uh, and then um, I was doing okay, but then in, oh, in uh, September of 08, Hurricane Ike came and right through my neighborhood, uh, destroyed all my properties, my homes. I got really washed out and um, lost it all, right? And it eventually cost me my family even, my practice, my family. And so I rebuilt um, starting around 2009 at the age of 36. So I had to start all over again. And uh, by 2018, uh, nine short years later i retired from surgery not because i made a ton of money from surgery trust me doctors work very hard for the for a little bit of money that they get it's not like the good old days like it used to be guys so so i retired from surgery from doing all of these principles that i'm going to teach you getting around good people like uh we talked about earlier but i'm going to exactly tell you what you need to do if you are starting from ground zero all right like what videos to watch what what um books to read, etc. Okay, so let's get started. Now, let's say you're really, really out of luck, right? Let's say you're really hurting bad, because I was hurting, I was hurting really bad. So I want to start you off with free. Who likes free? <laughs> we all need free shit, right? So the number one best resource right now for you to get free information, free stuff, is what? You got it. You got to go to YouTube, all right? Now, I think by now, everybody has looked at YouTube, has a YouTube account, etc. And if you're spending your time watching, you know, squirrels surfing or cats, kitties playing with balls, you're wasting your time. Or backstreet brawls, backyard brawls, you're, you're wasting your life. And that that's actually one part maybe why you're struggling, right? So what we want to do is we want to get on YouTube, all right? Now, what happens if you get on YouTube, though? You go search, help me make money, you're going to get a bunch of videos. There's billions and billions of videos uh, on YouTube, right? So what we want to do, the point of this video is I want to give you people to really just start watching, watching, okay? So the first one, now I want you to put a star by this guy because this guy changed my life. And he, his name is Jim Rohn. Now the average person has never heard of Jim Rohn, but if you're into any sort of personal development at all, Jim Rohn is like the father, the great, the, the OG man. He, he trained Tony Robbins. Um, everybody follows Jim Rohn's material, Les Brown. We'll talk about some of these people later. But I want you to get started with Jim Rohn, okay? Um, and, uh, and the reason why is because his philosophy, his money philosophy, is so simple, okay? And you've probably heard me talk about him on some other videos, but his money philosophy is so amazingly beautiful, simple. His wording is very easy. He just keeps it really calm. He's a very religious guy, so there's <laughs> he's the opposite of Dr. V. There's like no cussing. He never cusses. He's very calm. He doesn't put people down. He just kind of says it like it is. Now, Jim Rohn passed away, I think, in 08 um, or so. And so all you have are old videos of him. 
And it's, the old ones are the really good ones. The ones when he's 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 older, like more recent videos, he actually becomes an Herbalife distributor, and he talks he does more stuff for Herbalife, and it's not quite as good. So so there's a good middle ground. But here's the one I want the one video that I want you to watch. Go search on YouTube. So here's what you're going to actually type in the box, right? Jim Rohn advice for teenagers. Now, it sounds like it's not for teenagers. Trust me, it is a, a one hour video and you need to watch it all the way to the end because at the end he asks you uh, four questions and it's these four questions that changed my life. All right, at the and so the last seriously the last five minutes, and if you will watch this, this will change your life. If you, if it doesn't touch you, the last five minutes of this video, if it doesn't touch you, you're going, you're just not ready yet, because he asked the most pertinent questions, right? Um, that's gonna really inspire you to change your life, and from there you'll run down to other videos uh, from Jim Rohn. Okay. Uh, so searching Jim Rohn advice for teenagers is going to give you this one 60 minute video that's really amazing he's standing there's a blue background he's standing next to a whiteboard <laughs> imagine that and he's writing on it and he's explaining his background story and philosophy but stay all the way to the end to catch the last five minutes of it because it's really really amazing okay now Jim Rohn uh, branched off and did all this self-help stuff right now from Jim Rohn, he trains Tony Robbins. Probably right now, Tony Robbins is the biggest personal development guy, and he's not a motivational speaker, and he gets mad when people call him a motivational speaker. <laughs> he's, he's actually a business strategist, but he has so many free videos um, that are very motivational, okay? And what you're going to want to do, and I'll talk about this here in a little bit, is just get Tony Robbins on your playlist um, and just start listening to his videos while you're doing house cleaning, that sort of stuff. But he's amazing too. He has these huge conferences um, where you probably heard about it, where he makes people walk through hot coals and stuff. He's, he's done a lot of stuff with like Oprah Winfrey, etc. Um, he's a good one to listen to. Les Brown is a great one to listen to. Um, Les Brown Jr. spoke at Velocity, my conference, uh, last year. We're going to try to get Les Brown come next year. Uh, now, I like Les Brown because he has such an, a compelling story. Man, if this guy can come from nothing, you can do it too. So he's a great storyteller, and he does this. He, 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 he has great content and, and great material. Okay, so um, those three uh, free on YouTube will take will, will take you years to go through. But what happens with YouTube is if it starts, if you start like watching them, um, it'll give you recommendations and you start chasing them um, off, just kind of like how you found my videos probably on YouTube. Okay, now there's so many good ones. Um, I don't want to. Um, you know make anyone feel bad but but these are you know good way to start now so I would call these kind of more established um, so I want to give you a couple of newer ones that I, I enjoy and it kind of depends on um, it really depends on what you like your style okay so I'm gonna go a little bit softer <laughs> so I'll go softer to harder okay I don't know if that's on the screen or not there but okay so uh, I think Brendan Bouchard um, is really amazing now uh, Bouchard Brendan Bouchard I think there's an R in there Bouchard Bouchard um, he's a nice white guy he has a good story. Um, he's also a great storyteller. Uh, gives very um, compelling uh, dialogue. Gives you very practical tips. Uh, I would put him more. He he thinks of himself as a high performance coach. So he's more in lines with Tony Robbins. He's considered high performance. 
Um, but he would be a good one to, to get you started, get you motivated. Now, if you want to kick in the ass, like kick in the pants, um, like Grant Cardone was really hot a couple of years ago. I think he's fallen off a little bit because he's really into sales. I mean, some of y'all think I sell a lot. He sells a lot. So he's, you know, he's really good. I want to tell you, um, I, I really like Ed Milet. Um, I met Ed Milet last year in person. I've seen him talk a couple of times. He's a religious man. Not that that's good or bad, but if you want more religion, he's um, he, he he talks a little bit about God, but he and he doesn't care about your religion. I mean, he's not there to. He's he's big into maxing out, so he wants to do everything really hard. So if you need a real big kick in the pants, big time motivation, these guys. Now, what I found is my audience who tend to watch me tend to be more, you know, female, and maybe Grant Cardone or Ed Milet's a little too tough for them. But these, this is a definitely a great list to get started on YouTube. All right? I'll be right back. Tell you what books to read. So those YouTube videos are amazing. Hopefully, they'll change your life. But some people like books, right? And I'm going to tell you, when I lost everything in the hurricane, I, I couldn't afford to buy books, man. I had no money. So, Dr. Vong, I don't have any money. I don't have any money for books, all right? There's a library. I would tell you, man, that's what I did. I went to my public library. I got a library card, and I walked through the stacks. And I couldn't believe it because in my head, I'm thinking of libraries as like like encyclopedias and dictionaries and uh, and kind of like old old books like War and Peace and Madame Bovary and stuff like that, right? But most libraries these days have a really extensive self-help section. Did you know that? They have self-help now. So um, self-help. They have um, everything you can think about, motivational, uh, they have business books, right? Because they want to carry all of the, they want traffic, right? Uh, economics, so I went through a religion phase and stuff like that, so I got a lot of books on Buddhism and things like that. So don't discount your library, and, and trust me, we've all been there, right? At some point, you might have, you know, it was tough. I mean, depending on where you are, you might need this. All right. So I want to tell you real quick what books to read. Um, now there are some classics that everybody in the self-help world will tell you, right? So I'll give you one: "Think and Grow Rich" by Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, I'm gonna misspell his last name. <laughs> uh, I think Saki. There's a Y in there somewhere. I think it's Kate Les like that. Robert Kiyosaki. And, um, oh no, I lied. Think and Grow Rich is by, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll edit that down. Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill. I had a brain fart. All right, so Think and Grow Rich is, is probably like considered the first original self-help book. And this is Napoleon Hill is what started uh, Clement Stone, which then led to Jim Rohn, which then led to like all the greats, right? And everybody talks about Think and Grow Rich. I will tell you personally, uh, I haven't finished reading it. It's a little bit hard to read. The wording is kind of weird. It, it's kind of boring. It puts you to sleep. That's how I found it. Comment if you like Think and Grow Rich or you thought it was kind of boring to read. Uh, I keep saying I'm going to go back to reading it and I read parts of it. Um, but Cliff Notes would be fine. Uh, but there are people who do entire mastermind groups around Think and Grow Rich. This one book, all right? So you might want to look at that. But my point is don't get frustrated if you um, if if you can't make it through it, right? And then <laughs> the next one was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That's, that's what I was trying to do. Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Kiyosaki, right, by Robert Kiyosaki, and um, Rich Dad Poor Dad was the one that actually got me into the real estate thing. Now, and you could argue that because I did all that, that's how I ended up losing all my money and stuff, but 
I'm very comfortable around real estate now. I, I can buy houses. I can flip houses. I know what it takes to get a business loan, all sorts of stuff. And that's because I did it. There's just one missing piece I didn't know about, which is called renter's insurance. I highly recommend you have renter's insurance if you or um, loss of rents insurance. I'm sorry. It's called loss of rents insurance if you're a landlord. Okay. Um, but I didn't know about that. And now I do. But Rich Dad, Poor Dad. But the reason why I want you to read it is because... Um, he has very simple economic principles. Read it for the economic principles in there uh, that are contrarian. So I'll give you an example. You know, Robert Kiyosaki at the time when everyone else was saying the opposite, what he said is your house is not a good investment. And he's right. It's not your house because I grew up thinking your house was a good investment and that's what everybody thinks it is. Um, but it's not the average house. If you live in it and hold on it, the average house, if you're lucky, um, will return you about 1% a year. That's about 1% to 2% a year, right? And you might get lucky like California and hit a big boom, but you might also get unlucky in 2008 and have a huge crash and you could have bought at the top market, et cetera. Or worse than that, you could have like had to live through the 70s and 80s, which was like just stagnant. There was really no growth, right? And don't believe that common saying that says, well, you're not building any more land around here. You know, <sighs> these false myths get to me but i want you to read rich dad poor dad for its economic principles and it's so simply written it's kind of like the opposite of thinking rich he lays it's a story format um there's arguments whether or not he really went if the if his story is real or not but um some people believe it is some people don't believe it is it doesn't matter the principles are timeless, uh, very contrary. So I'll give you another example. An asset, he defines an asset as anything that puts money in your pocket every month. That's it. Uh, and um, a liability is anything that takes money out of your pocket every month, right? So for example, your house is a liability because it takes money out of your pocket every month. You gotta pay for insurance, repairs, upkeep, mortgage, um, and unless you're renting out a room or something out of it, you're not. But it's not putting any money in your pocket, right? Your car is not an asset. Your shoes are not an asset. Your collectibles are not an asset. Your your uh, basketball card collection, football card, baseball card collection is not an asset. It has to put money in your pocket every month, right? So, like my online, my book sales are would be considered an asset. My um, uh, your your job is an asset if it puts money in your pocket every month, right? Uh, rental income, because he's, he's talking about real estate, right? Rental income would be in, an asset. So um, I like that book because it really just breaks down uh, simple, simple things for you, okay? Um, I brought a few books. Now, this is not all inclusive, right? I have a few books here for you, and I'm just gonna rattle them off for you. Um, there are just some, some nice classic ones um, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Del Carnegie is a good book. How to Win Friends and Influence People. Uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People uh, by Covey. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Those are great. But um, I'm starting from the viewpoint like maybe you're new to self-help and you really need um, just God, Dr. Vaughn, give me the basics. So um, hold on just a second. So uh dean graziosi has a new book his whole um money he has a new book on um what's it called millionaire mindset the millionaire mindset i think millionaire principles that's what it is that is such a good book when i started reading it now it's a little bit below what i am and probably for what like some of the viewers are but if you're new to this this is a really good book and so I um, I started reading it, got about 50 pages into it, and I gave it to Erica. I was like, this is, you know, Erica's younger, a lot younger than me. So I was like, this is where you need to be reading, you know? And she, she loves it. I mean, she couldn't put it down. It's really, really good. Okay, so another, and I couldn't find, I have a copy, I just couldn't find it. Another nice beginner one. Oh, and by the way, I'm not getting, I have no affiliation with any of these books, any of these authors, so I'm not making any money, nothing like that, right? I'm just telling you what I read. So Jack Canfield, Canfield who I met a couple of years ago um, as, at a conference, 
this book is fantastic. It's the success his success principles book. You can see it's a beast, man. It is super big. It is 434 books and it's got all the different his little principles. I'll tell you. Each each little principle and takeaway is only about 3 or 4 pages. So you could totally read a principle a day or something like that and and get through it. Uh, his success principles book is really good for a beginner. Um, all right, so what I want to do is kind of tell you, I just have a few selected. Um, if you are, if you are a human <laughs> and you are alive, you need this book on negotiating. Every single day you are negotiating, not just when you're buying your car. People only think that like, they need to negotiate when they're buying a car. Not true. You're always negotiating with your wife, your husband, your kids, eat broccoli, right? Um, you're negotiating for your uh, pay raise or even to, people think a job interview is just an interview. No, no, it's a negotiation, right? So Roger Dawson has this book called The Secrets of Power Negotiating. It is fantastic. The first example about how you, when you go buy a car, you sit there and go, oh my God, that totally happened to me. That's exactly how I screwed up. You know, it's so good. This book, after reading it, um, honestly, like I, I'm, I made $20,000 on a deal because I negotiated it differently from after reading this book. Highly recommend this book. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's say... Okay, so here's a here's Grant Cardone's book, "Be Obsessed or Be Average." That's uh, this is Boba. Um, I think it's a really good book too. Uh, the audiobook's kind of fun too because he actually narrates it. Um, oh, here you go, Tim Ferriss. If you're not a big Tim Ferriss fan or you don't know about Tim Ferriss, he's the Four Hour Work Week guy. I should probably put that up here because actually the Four Hour Work Week really helped me too. So this is kind of a newer book. Actually, these are newer. So Tim Ferriss, Four Hour Work Week. So this was such a popular book when it first came out because there was nothing like it. He kind of, at the boom of the internet, he showed us how he set up this lifestyle business that worked on um, using assistants and virtual assistants and outsourcing materials and and um, he actually gave like the like the contact information for the actual businesses he used to create con to create videos and to create DVDs and to create books and to store you know warehouses and stuff like that that was back then he's updated a new version of it super good um, and then his book tools of Titans is really fantastic tool too so uh, as you can tell, this is also a massive book, but this is, he, he has a very popular podcast that you can listen to, but he's basically taken his best podcasts and distilled them down into these questions, right? So here's Damon John, his interview with Damon John, um, and it, he basically still distilled it down to, to one, one and a half pages. So Damon John was actually only got one page. And so it's a great read, and it's it's broken down into three segments: health, wealth, and wise. So if you're if you're thinking about your health, he's got a section on health, which you know he he's a big biohacker for him, his own body. Wealth, financial, and then wise would be the wisdoms, right? So this is also a great book worth your time. Um, now, if you're into network marketing. And um, I have a network marketing company. We can talk about that later. But there are a lot of people, you guys watching, I'm going to tell you network marketing is the best way to change your life. It's the easiest, quickest way to get into, um, to start a business for yourself with the least amount of risk, right? So network marketing are things like Mary Kay, Pampered Chef, Scentsy, um, Herbalife is a uh, network marketing. I'm in one called New You Life. We can talk about that later. But and I've read now probably six or seven books on network marketing. This is by far the best. Um, no, uh, you know, no, no knock on Eric Orway's book, but Building an Empire 
by Brian Crothers. By Brian Crothers is the best network, network marketing book. It talks about what to do, step one, two, three, why you do it. It's very practical, you know, no fluff, like why you need to do it. So this is a great book. Now, maybe you're somewhere in life where like, you don't want to talk about money. You're not ready to talk about that sort of stuff. But you, you want to have like a bigger view of life, right? A classic book that will change your life is Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Man's Search for Meaning. I started reading this book and it cut me so deep that I had to put it down because I couldn't finish it. It's about, he's a, a German psychiatrist and he was in Nazi Germany in a concentration camp and he survived it and he writes about his experiences in Nazi Germany but also um, talks about like his lessons learned and you know in summary you know without I can't do the book justice but basically it says that no matter your con what conditions or environments that you're put in and he was put in extreme conditions during the Nazi camp um, you, you can't know your captors cannot take away your free choice of like how to, how to choose how you're gonna be how you're gonna be at that moment they can't take that away from you right it was a super powerful lesson um, a newer more modern book that I'm gonna tell you will screw you up a lot this book called Sapiens by Harari H A R H A R A R I Harari Sapiens a brief history of humankind uh, I actually it's a big book and I actually listened to it on audio, and um, it is unbelievably well written. But and it just screws with your mind. Like so, for example, he talks about the difference between a species and a breed. Like you know, a dog, canine is a species, but you have different breeds, and 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 dogs can interbreed, right? And you can get a mutt. But um, like a dog and a lion can't have, you know, well, actually the lion's like a different species, but um, uh, I'm just trying to go another dog, uh, maybe a wolf, you know, like they're not, they don't really have babies, right? So in humans, when I look, when I, for, in my faulty remembering, I thought, you know, you see that line of like a monkey, early man, Neanderthal became um, human eventually. That's not the case. It actually, there were different species of uh, hominid, hominoids, like walking man walking around. It's really kind of weird. And then, and then he goes on and talks about what's happening in today's world and how we become the dominant creature on the planet. And, and our um, 7 billion people plus all of our cattle and, and pigs and um, ag culture, agriculture, um, pretty much dominates the planet now like there's not this huge variety of animals like you like we think there are and I started thinking about that and walking around so I'm like dude where are all the birds like there aren't birds anymore like when I was growing up and there's you know they're it's just crazy like how we've uh, eradicated other species so it will kind of put your head into like all right where did I come from how did I get here etc those are a few of the books I had handy that I wanted to show you um, I try to read about a book a week um, and um, you know I, I think your life will change when when you start to kind of expand your mind right uh, I'll be back next segment to talk about how you learn faster because I think that's super key okay so now we have which videos to watch what books to read etc uh, you might be thinking to yourself like Shit, Dr. Vong, that's a lot of material to go through. How do I do it, right? So there's a couple ways to do this. Um, and this is what I, I recommend, okay? So always, always have a video going. So um, if you ever see me with a picture of me and earbuds in my ear, um, guess what music, I'm, what song I'm listening to? Trick question. I'm not listening to a song. I guarantee you I'm listening to a self-help video. And I've been doing this for years. I watch about 10 self-help videos a day for about 10 years. Um, and, and it changes your life. And sometimes I have to listen to stuff over and over again, just reminders. I go back and listen to Jim Rohn over and over again too. I just finished up 
about three weeks of Tony Robbins. I just need, I just felt like vibrationally I needed some Tony Robbins in my life. So you need to always have a video going. So when you're doing laundry, like, like chores, okay, vacuuming, dude, put in your earbuds, listen to a self-help video. Does that make sense? Turn on Jim Rohn. If you're mowing the yard, if you are raking leaves, or you're sweeping the porch, if you're vacuuming, if you're doing the dishes, that'd be a great time uh, to put your earbuds in, okay? Uh, always have a video going. Driving. A lot of you guys have long commutes watching me. Why are you wasting it on sports talk radio, morning traffic uh, news report, or just regular music? I promise you, you're going to radically change your life if you get out of this mindset that is like, but I need to know what's happening in, in the world, Dr. V. Dude, you don't, you don't need to listen to the radio to know what's happening in the news. It, it's always there. I like my music because it calms me down or stress, it relaxes me. Well, how? yeah, but you're stress eating. You are stressed out about life. You don't have what you want in life. So your music, and I, I, love, I love music, don't get me wrong, but it's not... It's not helping your life, right? So you want to do stuff that's helping your life. So just on when you're driving, just um, even I just turn on my phone and and I turn it to YouTube and have a video going. All right, and you can download podcasts. So podcasts, so that way you don't have to have Wi-Fi. Like Dr. Vaughn, I'm not fancy. I don't have Wi-Fi all of, everywhere I go. I have a limited data plan. Well, if you download a podcast, you can just listen to it, right? So videos. Um, and yes, you can have CDs, man. You just pop in a CD. A lot of these people, like Tony Robbins, they're old school, right? So they have uh, DVDs or CD discs that you just pop in and you listen to. I would still, I still did that, right? Okay, so always have a video going. Number two, uh, audiobooks. Now, some people, quite frankly, are like, I don't want to pay for an audiobook. I don't want to do this. Like, dude. Again, you gotta get out of this mentality. Like, like, like this book made me twenty thousand dollars on a deal because I learned how to negotiate something. Right? Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Um, this book, which I listened on audio, gave me a much wider perspective about my place in this world, what's happening on this planet right now, and so it made me like get more urgency. To what I was trying to do and and now that's why I was like dude we need to conquer obesity we're eating way too much food we're destroying our planet yada yada we're hurting our health and it's from this book right okay okay so audiobooks now here's what I want you to do with audiobooks though I need you to listen to it at one and a half times to two times the speed right so if this means if it's an eight hour audiobook, eight hours, and if you listen it to one and a half times the speed, you'll listen to it in six hours. It'll finish it, it'll only take six hours. So if you have a long car ride, a lot of road trips, airplanes, uh, etc., you can cover a lot more ground. And if you do it at two times the speed, obviously you finish it in four hours, half the time. And that's nothing, man. Four hours is nothing to have a whole book. So the whole book might take you weeks to read, but an audio book, you can cut it down into a few hours. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Um, but I will warn you, uh, listening to an audio book is different than reading a book. So we're going to do that next. So reading. Because when you start reading, what happens is um, it triggers other different parts of your brain. You're much more focused. You have to be very aware versus listening to a video or an audiobook. You can be doing other things. But when you're reading, you have to have so focus is the key. Attention, right? So what I want you to do is go to our good buddy, YouTube, again, and start watching speed reading videos. Like how to speed read, okay? That's what I want you to do. So, so um, some books you you can't speed read through, like um, like Viktor Frankl's book. You can't speed read this because it, it tells a story. But most self help books, I'll give you an example. Oh, here you go. So, like Jack Canfield's book, right? It 
self-help books have no fluff, right? So you can just really just skim the, the principles of exactly what he, he has here, right? You become like the people you spend the most time with. Pay any price to stay in the presence of extraordinary people. You just need a couple nuggets and just start skimming through these books, right? And then also it helps to know if, let's say, well, Dr. Vong, like speedy reading doesn't work. You, you, you're not really, I'm not learning the material. Well, what speedy reading will do for you is teach you real quick, like I'm not ready, like I'm not interested in this book and you can put it away. So instead of reading a book cover to cover, and at the end of it, you're like, ah, that was a waste of time. Like you figure it out in the first five to 10 minutes if you will watch a few YouTube speed reading videos. And I watch those videos to learn when I'm going to a bookstore, I'll start skimming a book. I'll, I'll pull it out of the shelf. I'll look at the covers. I'll do all the stuff it taught me, skim the table of contents. I'll start reading a few chapters, a few lines, and I'll decide yes or no. So it saves me trouble. Yeah, so you want to learn um, speed reading. Helps you focus, okay? All right. This is important because there's so much information, and if, if you just do what the average person does, you're going to stay broke. You're going to be struggling. Remember, the average American, um, two-thirds of Americans are overweight. A third of Americans are obese, which means they're not healthy. The average American is not healthy. 70% uh, of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, right? 60% of Americans don't have $500 in their bank account. Uh, most um, baby boomers cannot retire. They thought they'd work all their lives and retire at 65, and they're coming to 65, and they're realizing, dude, I have to work to 67 or 70, and, and then hopefully I don't outlive my money. So you can't be an average person. 80% Gallup poll said 80% 80 per, 80 of workers are disconnected from their jobs. That means that like they don't they don't care if they do a good job or not. And that's why the bank teller sucks. Why the cashier girl doesn't care. The girl, um, you know, the waitress is slow. Like they, they're 80% of people are disconnected from their jobs. So you can't be an average person if you want an above average life. You have to become an above average person. That's Jim Rohn right there, right? So you have to work on yourself. You have to learn to work on yourself. And working on yourself means you got to do all this stuff. You cannot watch football season, right? Like hours and hours. All, you can't lose every Sunday to football. And it's not even Sunday anymore, right? It's Thursday night football. There's Saturday college sports, college football. There's Sunday professional football. And there's Monday night football now with all the other stuff too. You can't fall for this stuff like other people. You, you can't waste your time on Game of Thrones. You, um, you know, Dr. Vaughn, this doesn't sound like fun. Like I, I need to have fun. I need to, be, I need to be interactive. I need to, how do I know what's going on in the world? Listen, you spend so much time on Facebook now. You can't help but to not know the news. We are completely connected all the time. You don't need, get rid of your television. It will change your life. In fact, that's, I'm gonna do that number four. Stop television. And by stopping television, I mean get rid of it. Like like sell sell your TV. Honestly, if you want your life to change, stop watching television. Stop watching lifetime movies. Stop like having the news blare while you're cooking dinner. It, you won't miss it. I was a big TV junkie. And where did that got me? It got me broke. It got me broke. Right, but Dr. Vaughn, what about PBS? What about listen? PBS is on YouTube now. You can find all this stuff on demand, like all the good stuff. Yeah, I'd rather source all my good stuff, right? Because here's the truth of the matter: life is just too short. Life is just too short. And one day you're gonna wake up and you're like, dude, my kids are 18. They're leaving home, and I don't have anything. I mean, I got a house full of shit, and I have. <laughs> Memories, I guess. But are they the memories that you really want? Are you a decent human? Are you helping out with your church? Are you being charitable? Are you traveling to the places you want to travel to? Did you have weight loss surgery and now you're still stuck in your house because you have no money to travel or to go or buy cute clothes? Are you, you know, are you still stuck in a dead end job? Are you still with in a passionate m marriage or relationship? You know, it doesn't have to be that way. If you start working on yourself, 
your life will change. And don't give me this bullshit about Dr. Vong, I do everything for everybody else. Fuck that shit, man. I'm, t I'm here to tell you, you cannot take care of other people unless you take care of yourself first. Amen? Give me some amens. You cannot be a good mom to your kids if you don't take care of yourself. You cannot be a good spouse if you don't take care of yourself. Always put yourself first. Like, I want Erica to go get her nails done and to do her hair and to feel good about herself and to take time and go to the gym. And, you know, today, like, we went to the pool and swam laps and, and it was good quality time together, you know? Like, I, you got to take care of yourself first. You cannot be spiritual. I'm spiritual, Dr. Vaughn. Well, if you're spiritual and you believe you come from, you created in the image of your God, then why are you obese? Why are you stressed out? Why are you, why do you have anxiety? You think your God put you on this planet to have anxiety? No, he did not. She did not. Of course not. You have anxiety because it all comes back to a money problem, a relationship issue problem, which is a money problem, right? So, I hope this video has been helpful to you. The next video in the series, I'm going to take all this stuff and show you, like, what are the business opportunities? How can you make money? Cool? So, I hope you stay tuned for our last video next, next time. Hi, Dr. Vong here. If you loved that video, I hope you will check out Velocity2020.com. I want to meet you in person. This is my big annual conference in Vegas. It's amazing. It's not just about weight loss surgery, but it's about taking your life up to the next level. You're going to meet the best people, the best speakers, the best audience possible. You're going to really take your life up to the next level. 2020 is all about vision, clarity, and focus. We're going to show you how to find your vision, what you really want to do with your life, get crystal clear, clarity, and then find your laser focus to do what you need to do to have the amazing life that you deserve. Hope to see you there.